last video about VE tuning, we were working with factory stock injectors. Now, at some point, in some cases, you know, in boost or larger cubic inch motors, you're you're going to need larger injectors, especially if you're running E85. And with boost, probably even on pump gas, you're going to need larger injectors. So when you change the injectors, you need to change the data in the tune. And a big part of that is of tuning large injectors is having good, accurate injector data. Now, a lot of the good injector companies will provide that data for you, which makes it easy to copy and paste that data into the tune and makes tuning so much easier. If your injector data isn't accurate, you might be able to compensate for that in the VE table or somewhere else, but you're just going to cause more hassles and problems down the road and it's going to just make the whole tuning process more difficult, especially if you try to guess at the injector data. For this example, I'm going to be using Injector Dynamics 1000cc injectors and you can find all their data right on their website. This is a common injector, so I'm going to go ahead and use it as an example. Um, then we'll bring the injector tuning data up by in the tune by going to Engine, Fuel, General, and then we've got the injector data all right here. So, the first thing we're going to look at is flow rate. Flow rate versus KPA. And then we're going to go over here in the tune. And another thing to keep in mind here is you want to make sure you're using data for the, the uh, fuel pressure you're running. If it's GM fuel pressure, it's 58 PSI typically. But some people run 43.5 or, you know, other flow rates. And I've found that if you contact these injector companies and you tell them, what fuel pressure you're going to be running, they can get you the data you need. But generally, if they provide GM data, it's going to be for 58 PSI. So we're, we're using 58 PSI in this example. And all we've got to do is we come in here to the flow rate versus manifold vacuum. And you'll see these numbers increase as vacuum increases. And what's going on there is when you have a vacuum, You've got the fuel pressure behind the injector. When that injector opens, it has a flow rate based upon that fuel pressure. As fuel pressure increases, flow rate increases. As it decreases, flow rate decreases. Same with vacuum is pulling on that. So as you have an increase in vacuum, your injector is going to flow more as well. So the, the tune compensates for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this data right into our tune. And now we have the correct data for those 1000 cc injectors. Now, another thing that comes in play is if you're running a return system with a boost referenced regulator, the regulator is going to control fuel pressure based upon vacuum and boost. So you won't need that in the compensated for in the tune because the actual fuel pressure is going to change based upon the vacuum and the boost. So in a case like that, you would go ahead and use your zero column and you'd use that in every column because you want the flow, the regulator to handle the pressure change for instead of the tune but if you do not have a boost reference regulator you're going to copy and paste that data straight in which is what we did for this example the next thing we're going to do is change the minimum injector pulse so we're going to go over here to the data. We got short pulse adder, minimum pulse width is 0.125. 
So we're going to go in, minimum ejector pulse. And we're going to change that, and it's going to round that. Sometimes it, it rounds the numbers you enter, which is perfectly fine. Then we're going to go to offset versus volts versus vacuum. We'll go in here and get bring up our data. Copy that. Go back and make sure it looks good. Everything does, so we're good there. Then we're going to look at short pulse limit. We'll go back to there's short pulse limits 3.0 we're going to change that to 3.0 then we've got short pulse adder and we've got that here we're going to make sure that the columns match We get the right one, so we're right here. We're going to copy that whole thing. Go back over the tune. Paste that in. So those are the five primary things you need to change to have the correct in injector data in your tune for the injectors you've just installed. Now I've literally seen times where I've had a tuned car where the only thing I changed was the injectors and put in the new injector data and fired the car up and the fueling was perfectly the same as it was before I changed the injectors. So that's what good data can do for you. That would be relying upon the original jet injectors having good data as well as the new ones because if you tune the car with bad injector data from the original injectors and you switch injectors then you probably tuned around that so you're going to have some adjustments to make. But good injector data is key to making tuning way easier and making sure that you have a correctly set up VE table and everything else so you don't run into issues trying to tune around bad data. So that is another thing where you just don't want to use injectors you don't even know what they are. If you've got some used injectors laying around you want to use them and you don't have to even know what they are or what the data is on them. It's going to, you know you're you're going to be guessing and tuning around that, and it's going to cause a lot of headaches.